Blimey, it's time for yet another phone review. Now, I've reviewed IDAN, GSM, and more recently a CDMA phone. But tonight, we're going to keep going into the GSM vein as I show you one of my more rare and obscure phones. Dun, da, da, dun. There it is in all its glory. This is the NEC. A232. Who the hell are NEC, you might ask? Well, they're more well known in Japan where they have released several more phones. They have released some phones in North America, but that was only a handful, and some of them were fairly bad. I must say, this one is really well so so as well. I thought I'll get to that a little more later. So, as you can see, this phone is rather, well, fucking ugly. Oh, well. Here is the 0.3 megapixel camera, little mirror for self shots, and this is an LED flash. Wow, I'm actually speechless. Here is a tiny little secondary screen that shows signal, battery, time, and date. Ignore the date and time on this one. It is totally, totally wrong. And I find it funny that the phone has signal because this is the same GSM SIM card I use, which is not active. Kind of funny. I'll show you a little modification I spoke about and actually posted some pics about, but you'll see it right live. First, you can clearly see that the phone is powered up and running. Take a look at the battery though. Tell me, what do you see? No Kia. That's right, an NEC phone that runs on a Nokia battery. I was actually fiddling around with the phone because I did not have the charger for this one. And I noticed the polarity to be similar to that battery of the Nokia. And I, sw I turned the battery around and noticed that the polarities match perfectly. So, hell, I thought, let's try it out. So I popped the battery in. However, it is a little shorter than the original battery, so I had to craft a little stopper made of paper to hold it uh, tight, as you can see. Otherwise, the battery will fall out. Yep, an NEC phone running on a Nokia battery. How awesome is that? Here is the home screen once again. Battery. The little lock you see there, I'll get to a little bit later. Signal gauge. Again, no signal. I don't understand why there is signal since, oh, SOS only. Yeah, whatever. Browse, message, and camera. The, this is a dual clock or a world clock. Date is wrong, completely, totally, absolutely wrong. And you can see it's in pocket mode right now and vibrate. Ooh. Now that little lock you see right there, this is an interesting little function the Eddie C232 has. Let's press the phone book key. Oh, what's this? Phone asks for a security code. I'll just punch that in. There it is. Boom! You're in your phone book. So, yeah, that's actually a password on your phone book. How awesome is that? I love that function, really. It's fucking awesome. Here's a take a look at the keyboard, soft keys, four-way D-pad with pre-configured shortcuts, menu, phone book, the actual keyboard itself. Now, I really hate this phone's keyboard. The keys are, well, kind of hard to tell apart and they're not raised, nothing. Feedback, tactile feedback is, well, very bad. I'll just leave it to that. 
Now let's explore the menu, shall we? I have to say first that this phone's firmware is ridiculously slow. It, seriously. But, I'll show you some cool functions. Second LCD. Backlight. Backlight color, there it is. Standard. And you've got a choice of backlight colors. I'll flip the phone to show you around. Yeah. How awesome is that? I love that green. Reminds me of the fog. And it's so awesome. You can also change the backlight of the caller for an incoming call, an incoming message, and the color that the screen will be when you're in call. Very nice. I must say I quite like that feature. All right, I'm going to go back, phone settings, change the language, voice volume, phone modes. Again, that is the equivalent of profiles. Ring silencer, this, well, silence the ringers. Volume keys, you can also display your own number, phone language, that kind of shit. Call settings, call forwarding, call waiting, auto redial, send, own number, common stuff that we've seen in other of my reviews. Security, well, there goes the security options. Network, this is interesting. Let's see. Band priority. This is absolutely hysterical. 850, 1900. US. And the second option is 900, me no, 1800 megahertz, sorry. And you can clearly see it says Europe. So you can actually set the phone to give priority to U US or European networks which does crack me up. I mean, why would I set this phone, give priority to Europe when it's a fucking American phone? Oh, well. Clock, bunch of garbage, nothing really interesting. Others, synchronization, <laughs> forget about that. Internet settings, that's a laughable joke since the settings cannot be changed. You see here, Locus Mobile GSM, which to my knowledge is an American carrier, albeit a small one. And the internet settings are hard coded into the phone, making it impossible to change them. So this phone, while it does have edge, has no access to the internet whatsoever no access, which fucking sucks. What else can I say about this phone? Well, call quality was good, but nothing amazing. Then again, this is GSM, and I have been an IDEN user, and I'm used to the clear sound quality of IDEN. Uh, I was told on the color and that I sounded cell phony, you know. It's kind of hard to explain, but that distinctive sound, you just know you're on, someone is on a cell phone. Well, oh, sorry for that interruption. Stuff happens. Uh, where I was, oh yeah, call quality and signal. Signal is pretty good since this is 850 and 1900. This is a dual band phone. So signal is pretty good. Sound quality, like I said, was, well, nothing really amazing, but does the job. If you ever happen to find one of these phones, get it, if not just for the fact that it is an oddity, a curious oddity indeed. And if you're up for some laughs, just go ahead and use it. The lag in the firmware is absolutely unbearable.
it's it may not have been so bad here, but trust me, it sucks. Where is my garbage? Oh yeah. I'll show you the picture just so you can see the lag. Takes half of eternity to load up. Oh yeah, I'm gonna love this. This is a proprietary port for headset as well as USB. And the only thing you can do with this phone if you get the proper USB cable is unload your pictures. And that's something you'll find yourself doing a lot since the phone has so little internal memory. Still, an interesting curiosity. Well, that was the NEC A232.